Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord right there. Come on and give him praise. Praise him for who he is to you. If you really thank God for another day, you thank God for bringing you to this house one more time. Come on and just honk your horn and just shout heartily. God, I thank you. I thank you, God, because when we realize it could have been the other way. We could have been in the world, but not know we in the world. We could have been dead, sleeping in our grave, and God has given us another day. Why don't you shout hallelujah, hallelujah? Because we know that he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Anybody really come to praise the Lord today? Anybody really come to thank God? I thank you for waking me up. I thank you for my health and my strength. Hallelujah. It's another day, and we say, God, we thank you. You know, there's a little country song that says, it's another of you today believe that you are all right out there. Yeah. We've gone through 13 months of this coronavirus, but I told you a long time ago that with the Lord's help that we all will be all right. Y'all right. help me this morning, church. I'll be all right. Church, you know that I'll be all right. Church, you know that I'll be all right.
you know how much we truly thank you Lord. Sure. Thank you Lord for being in this moment right now oh Heavenly Father to give you the praise, the honor and the glory. Yes, oh Heavenly Father you've been so good to so us good. down through the years oh Heavenly Father yes. and we want to thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. We know Lord that you have all power in your hand yes. oh Heavenly yes. Father so we come right now oh Heavenly Father praising you Yes, thanking you, oh Heavenly Father, for the past, the present, and we know you'll be with us in the future. Sure enough, oh, Heavenly Father, you have been so good to us, oh so Heavenly good. Father. We thank you, Lord, for these 13 months, oh Heavenly Father, uh -huh. that we've been out here, oh Heavenly Father, serving you. Yes, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, thank to be you, in your lineage, oh Heavenly Father, to be able to give you some service. Yes, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, continue to be with our church, oh Heavenly Father. Uh-huh. Continue to strengthen us, O oh Heavenly Father, and yes, lift Lord. us up, O oh Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. that we can be a blessing unto you, O oh Heavenly Father. Uh -huh. We pray now, O oh Heavenly Father, to strengthen our pastor, O oh Heavenly Father, yes, continue Lord. to be with him uh -huh. and his family, O oh yes, Heavenly Lord. Father. Yes, Lord. Oh Heavenly Father, we realize, O oh Heavenly Father, it's been died by faith, O oh Heavenly Father. Uh -huh that you brought us thus far. Yes, and it'll be by faith, oh Heavenly Father, that you lead us on, oh Heavenly sure Father. Sure oh Heavenly Father, we know not politics, mm -hmm. nor race, or wars, or nothing else, oh Heavenly yes, Father. Yes. Have the power that you have, oh yes. Heavenly Father. Yeah. We pray, Lord, you continue to lead us on. Continue, Lord. In Jesus' name Jesus we pray. Name. Amen. 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 
Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, honk your horns. Praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We serve a good God. We serve a great God. And we come to give him praise. We come to give him high praise. Good morning, Noah's Ark. Come on, come on. Good morning, Noah's Ark. Hallelujah. Anybody got a hallelujah in their spirit on this morning? Do you got a reason to give him glory? Do you got a reason to give him honor? Do you got a reason to give him praise? Are you glad about it this morning? Then let's give him a high praise.
should have and he couldn't have is grace and is mercy. So he deserves it. No matter what we're going through, y'all. Child, and somebody know what I'm talking about. God deserves it. And in turn of your praise, he'll replace that morning with joy. For return of praise, he'll give you peace. For that return of praise, he'll make that thing that looked like a bad thing, it'll turn around. It's in your praise, people. It's in your living right and it's in your praise. Because living right is a part of your praise. that he'll do it and so everything that he gives us we gotta give it back he gave us love we give it back he gave us blessings we give it back he loves us so much so everything everything is vying for our affection everything is vying for our attention but the devil, I heard somebody say he ain't got no new, uh, no what, new tricks. He just, is that right? He just got new faces. But I don't care what he comes with. He has nothing on the power of God. Matter of fact, God has given you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. So we can attack. We give it back to you, Jesus. Everything that you gave to us, oh God, we give it back to you, God. Hallelujah. Let's continue to give him high praise. Cause my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it.
don't know the words, you can show a holler like that, can't you? Amen. You can show a holler and tell God, thank you for being our, our all and our own. And how much do we deserve? Amen. He deserves all of our praise. Amen. He deserves all of our attention. Even on the lot. Amen. He deserves our attention. Amen. He, we worship him. Amen. We worship him. Amen. Isn't it interesting that we could even come out on the lot and be still and worship the Lord and lift up our hands and tell him thank you. Amen. Let me say thank you for those who are joining us by way of Facebook and YouTube and those that are, are watching. We do, uh, we do wish that you would push the share button. Amen. And share or like or comment and let us know what you think. Share it with some of your friends. We have some folk watching all across the, all across the country as a matter of fact. Amen. Amen. Uh, even out in Iowa, Robert Drayton Sr. and his mom and all, amen, out in Iowa, they are watching us today. Willie Lee Osborne, Barbara Sheely, and Renza and the Bing family, and Sherry, who's recovering. We, uh, we pray God's blessings on her, and she's watching us. She's got us tuning in in the living room. Amen. Tyrone Mercer, Earl Sealy, Tabitha, good to have you there. And uh, Denise Harrison, all of, all of those are watching here. Amen. At the, in Keysville, Georgia. Amen. On Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And many of us are right in the lot. Amen. That are sharing on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Amen. God is somebody, isn't he? Amen. He's somebody. And even for those that are not watching, uh, not watching at home, we have one of our oldest members, amen, right here. She's on the lot with us today, Miss Eleanor Stallings. Hey, Miss Stallings. Amen. Got Miss Eleanor Stallings on the lot. And one of our youngest members, little, little, uh, Destin. Amen. Tell Destin Hale over there. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, so we're, we're grateful for all that have gathered. Uh, stay tuned in the, as we prepare for more. Let's thank God for Jocelyn McCaster and her ministry. Amen. <laughs> amen. Let's thank God for her sharing with us today. Came all the way down, amen, off of Rosedale Street. Amen. To be with us in 30816. And how grateful, how grateful we are. Listen, th today is Communion Sunday, and we gather for communion. We celebrate the Lord's Supper. So if you're at home, we, we suggest that you gather your substances, that we may pray for them and bless them at the end of the service, that we can break bread together. Amen. We can eat together, strengthen ourselves uh, together as one body in Christ, wherever you are. Amen. We can do that together today. So prepare for that, if you will, while you have just a quick second of downtime. Prepare for that. Listen, we're in still in pandemic mode. I know we know that some of the things are lightening up, uh, but don't get too careful. Don't get too careless. Amen. Don't get too careless. Remind yourselves that I still got to be careful. Uh, even when I'm outside, even when I'm close to someone, amen, we don't want to, we don't want to have a relapse, but thank God that it is going in the right direction, right? Amen. It's going in the right direction. Let me find out who all, how many of y'all have taken your shots already? Let me hear some horns. Amen. Oh, yeah. That sounds like, that sounds like about 95%. Amen. So we're, we're, we're headed back in the sanctuary real soon. Amen. I, you should be getting text messages and email. We, we got enough, about another seven weeks 
uh, before we get back in, but we are, we are headed in that direction. So y'all keep getting the shots. Make sure your, your company keepers and those folk around you are doing the same thing. Amen. The sooner we can uh, create this herd immunity, the, the better off we're going to be, even in the church, uh, when we get there. So keep doing those things. Gather your surfaces. And then listen, let me thank those folk who are consistently giving their offering, their tithes and their offering to the church. Let me thank you for doing that. And let me suggest and encourage you to continue to, to support the church here, support the church. And we thank you for especially our members who have, who have been very supportive over these past 13 months. We thank God for you. Our sermon today is going to come from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Amen. We, since it's communion, we're going to talk about communion. Amen. Since today is communion, it, it may not be a get rich sermon, may not be one of those things where you're going to, you know, you're going to get a new house or anything, but we're going to find out what the Lord says and how rich, how rich Holy Communion is today. So if you get your Bibles turned to First uh, Corinthians chapter 11, and I think we're going to zero in on verses 23, 24, 25, 26, and maybe some preceding that. So get ready for that, and we, we thank God for you being here. Once again, let's thank God for uh, Joycelyn McCaskey and her ministry. Listen, you need to go to her Facebook page and go to her, go to her um, social media sites. Any way you can support her, she's been supportive of Noah's Ark, amen, for, uh, for doing this pandemic time, coming down to just kind of minister to us just when we need it. Amen. So we thank her for and, and her ministry and those singers that are with her that they sacrificed to come this way. Amen. And share with us down in, in, in the country. Amen. Of Keysville, Georgia, 4466 Highway 80 West. Amen. And it might be a place that you want to travel and come and visit also. So we thank God for them. They're getting ready to minister to us as we, as we prepare to uh, hear, from, hear word from the Lord. And all, this, this pandemic has weakened a lot of us. It has literally taken some of our virtue and our strength. It is literally kind of operating on our families and our homes. And, and, and the enemy is just trying to tear it down, weakening the structure that God has put in place. And sometimes you've got to sing your way back into that place that God wants you. Sometimes you've got to praise your way into that. And sometimes you got to listen. And sometimes you don't need to talk to nobody else. You need to talk to God. And realize that where your real strength comes from. I wish I had somebody just blow one horn. Where your real strength comes from. Your strength is, we finding out that our strength is not in our money. Our strength is not in our friends. Some of us got money and still can't spend it. We got friends and can't visit them. We got family members who are, who are scattered all around and can't come to the house. He's weakening us. The, the enemy is trying to tear us down. But you need to look to God and say, you are my strength. All right. Come on, I need somebody to holler that out. And you sitting outside your car, you ought to holler. You ought to take your mask off one minute and say, you are my strength. Come on, I need to, I need to hear it. I, I don't need to hear another horn. I need to hear a voice. Open your mouth and give him the sacrifice of your lips and say, you are.
it grows and it grows. The more we hear the word, the more we're strengthened, the more it grows. The more, let it get down, let it get down on the inside of you. And let it work, let it work, let the word work. Pastor has prepared a word that came directly from God. And we have to open our ears, open our hearts to hear what he is saying. It'll give you strength. today.
God, we thank you now because you are our strength. Strength like no other. God, our dependency is on you right now. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for preparing that home for us. And then, God, we just thank you for being our God. God, we've leaned on others and others let us now. We count on others to be there for us and God they fell by the wayside so we come to say thank you for being an almighty awesome powerful God that's able to do what our grandparents said prop us up on every leaning side and God here we are today 
preparing for worship, preparing for the word of God. We thank you for the worship that we've already experienced. But God, we pray now for what's going to take place next week. We pray for every doctor's visit. God, we pray for every courtroom encounter for those that are with us. We pray, our God, for the success of medicine and surgery. We pray, God, for strength for those who are weak. And then, God, we just pray that you would lift them up as they lift you up. Bless us now for this preaching moment by letting the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. God, you are my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, real quickly, if you have your Bibles and your devices ready, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The context of the sermon is actually uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 17 through 26. I just want to read uh, the last few verses beginning with verse 23. Look what, look what the, the, the Bible says. The Bible says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way you took the cup of wine after supper, saying uh, this cup is of the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. Last time we were together outside, I tried to share a word from the Lord, talked about the power of the resurrection. For it was Resurrection Sunday, the last time we were on the lot here. And I, I thought about that. And I, but today I want to just, I want to stay with the power. And I want to talk about the power, the power of communion. Amen. The power of Communion. That's what I want to talk about for a few moments. If you give me just a few minutes of your time, amen. The power of communion. I don't have to remind you all that today is uh, the first Sunday in May and we come together as a body of believers and we come for the sole purpose, amen, to worship the God of the Bible and to give him praise for the many blessings that he's bestowed upon us Literally, since we met, since we last met together, we met today. Because we come because because today is Sunday, Amen. And Sunday is a special day. It's a special day that we observe that we call the Christians' Sabbath. What makes this Sunday even more special, my brothers and my sisters, is the fact that in about twenty minutes from now we will celebrate one of the ordinances of the church called Holy Communion. Um, better yet, it is the Lord's Supper that comes from the Lord's table. And according to the Bible, the act of carrying out this, this commandment, listen, it, it is not an optional commandment. It's something that we are commanded to do. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it right here in our text. If you look at verse number 24, it says, do this in remembrance of me. He didn't say think about doing it. He didn't say uh, when you have time to do it. He said, do this. In remembrance of me. So we gather here. We gather here uh, on Church on the Lot in Keysville, Georgia, on this communion Sunday to worship God in the beauty and the majesty of his holiness. The text in our text, 1 Corinthians, uh, this is Paul's account of the Lord's Supper. It was written, listen, it was written for you Bible scholars. It was written before the Gospels, which possibly makes it the earliest written account of Holy Communion. Paul is talking, listen, Paul is talking to a divided church. 
He's talking to church who were not on one accord. So I know he's not talking to Noah's Ark, right? He, he was talking to a divided church, a church who was not on one accord. And he was, he was reminding them of the significance, the significance and the potency and the power of the Lord's Supper of what we call communion. They are divided. Listen, this church, they're at Corinth. They're divided over the simple things in life. Uh, he had previously taught them earlier in chapter 10 about the Lord's table. They were, but they were, they were messing it up and they were arguing over simple things like food. Communion came in second place, but the collard greens was in first place. Communion was in third place. The red velvet cake was in first place. They, they were arguing over stuff. So Paul goes back to them. He writes to them. He, he's quoting Jesus from that upper room experience as he shares with the disciples at that last, at the last supper in that upper room. It is where Jesus institutes what we know as holy communion. I like the sequence of the verse. I like the sequence of the verse. If you get a chance, just mark it in your mind. But look, what it's, look at the sequence. He took the bread. He gave thanks for the bread. He broke the bread into pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I like that. I like that about it because today I think you will agree with me that, 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 that for the last 14, 15 months, we have not been able together in our usual setting to partake of the Lord's Supper. That table has been, been outside. It hadn't, it's not really the communion table, but we made one up for today. Uh, but but we're going to roll it over here in a few minutes, but we have not been able together in the, in the, in the traditional setting where we can partake together of the Lord's Supper. Our deaconess, deacon, deaconess um, Betty Abrams and Emma Glover, they have not been able to get to the church early on the first Sunday morning and carefully dress and prepare the table for us to take communion. The rest of the deaconess haven't put on their contemporary white uniforms and their white hats. And some of them might put on a dually if they had one, but they haven't been able to do that. We have not really enjoyed the singing of the traditional communion Sunday songs. We have, have not enjoyed that uh, since this pandemic. Y'all know we haven't, we haven't heard songs like Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. We hadn't had a chance to enjoy those traditional country hymns that the church sang. Yeah, we hadn't enjoyed that little song that says, let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall down on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Lord have mercy on me. We have not had a chance to enjoy it those things because of this COVID-19, because of this, 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 this coronavirus, because of this pandemic that we're in, we hadn't been able to sing that song that said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunged beneath that flood, lose all their guilt and stain. We have not been able to enjoy that little black hymn book. I hadn't seen that little black, black hymn book in 14 or 15 months. But, but that little black hymn book has, has, has not been opened in over a year, but the words uh, have not been on the projector screen where we could all sing that common meter hymn found in number 544 that says, Here at your table, Lord, we meet to feed on food divine. The body is the bread we eat, thy precious blood, the wine. We have not been able to do that. Con communion is a special time. In our church life, it's a special time. Communion is not only special, but it's sacred. Communion is not only sacred. I wanted to tell you today that communion, the time of communion is powerful. It's a powerful time. Our deacons have not had the opportunity to walk down the aisles with their black suits and white gloves on to administer the communion as we know it. We have not been able to shout when someone would break out with a song that says, come over here where the table is free. It's been a rough year. I would have to admit to you, and I'm, I'm a little tired of it. I'm, I'm ready to get back into the church. I don't know about you, but I, I'm ready to get back and do those things in a sacred way. It's been rough, and, I, and I, I can't wait to get back in the sanctuary and celebrate the Lord's Supper in a traditional kind of way. Listen, listen, I know, I know some of y'all saying right now, we, we've not neglected the Lord's Supper. No, we have not. We've not neglected communion. As a matter of fact, we will celebrate it in a few minutes today. 
Many of you have been faithful in picking up your substances before the first Sunday. Others have made sure that at home you had something to represent his broken body. Something to represent that blood that flowed from Emmanuel's vein. But I wanted to preach my little sermon today because to, I needed to remind some of us that nothing can take away the power of the Lord's Supper. Nothing can take away the power of what it represents. Nothing can take away what it really means. But the only thing that can change the power of the Lord's Supper is our perception of the Lord's Supper. It's what we think about it, how we treat it. Do we treat it special? Do we make time for it? Do we prepare ourselves for it? Do we examine ourselves? That's the only thing that can, can take away the power of the Lord's Supper. And I think Jesus must have known this, uh, that that time sometimes has the propensity to dilute and diminish the power of the Lord's Supper. So he says, as often as you do this, as often as you do this, you show forth my remembrance. He says, I know sometimes you're going to forget about it. Sometimes you're just going to make it another ritual. You're just going to make it something tagged on to the end of the service. He says, but as often as you do it, Maybe you'll be reminded of what it really means to remind you of the power that's in, in the communion, that's at the Lord's table. You've heard these sayings before that says the deeper things of life are acted out rather than spoken. The deeper things of life are acted out rather than spoken. Or maybe you heard it said like this, I'd rather see a sermon than hear a sermon. I just heard the I just heard the minister McCaster said earlier that that, that 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 our the way we live is our highest praise that we can give to God. How we obey Him d determines our obedience, determines how much we praise Him. It, it gives us a higher hallelujah based on our obedience to Him. It becomes that highest praise. You heard it before. There's something about the human mind that we remember more about what we see than what is said. Most of my sermons, most of the sermons that are being preached in churches across the country, very rarely will we remember them a week from now. But Jesus knew this about communion so, and the Lord's Supper, so he, he tells us to do it in remembrance of me. The Lord's Supper, can I tell you what it is? The Lord's Supper is simply an outward demonstration of the initial transformation that we had with Jesus Christ that produced our Christian faith. It's simply a representation. It's a demonstration. It's symbolic of who we are on the inside and not who we are on the outside. But because many of us can take it, but do we really do? Have we really been transformed on the inside? Or uh, the symbolism means something. The representation means something. So it, it's a mean that, and, and it's not a means. Listen, communion is not a means to salvation. Listen, just because you're gonna take that cup today. Just because you're going to break that bread and we're going to eat together, that doesn't mean that you are saved. It doesn't mean that you can get saved by taking it. Uh, and it's not something that we just tag on the end of the sermon on the first month. It cannot get you saved, but it symbolizes the fact that you are saved. Amen. That's why you take it, because I am saved. That's why I want to break bread uh, as often as I can. That's why I want to be the church on the on the first Sunday. If I can't come no other kind of way, roll me in here on the first Sunday. If you can't do nothing else, Somebody said, you don't say a whole lot of stuff, but can you, can you tell me what you're talking about? This power, look at, the, look at the Bible. What he tells us, first of all, is this right here. He says the power from the table, the power from communion reminds us that it is personal. The power from the communion means that it is personal. You can't drink for me. You can't, you can't eat bread for me. You can't do it for me. He says, this is my body, which is given, watch this, for you. It's not for them. It's for you. It's personal. It's, yeah, and that's how you ought to take it. You ought to take, take communion personal. You ought to make it a personal thing with you. You ought to make it like, I, I'm going to take it. If I don't care if nobody else in the house take it, I'm taking it. I don't care if nobody in the church takes it. I'm going to take communion because I want to do it in remembrance of Jesus who is the Christ. So, so it, is, it reminds us, it's a reminder to us that it is a personal act. It's a personal transition that takes place on this first Sunday morning. That's why communion is special. That's why you ought to make sure that you take the communion. That's, that's why you ought to make sure you prepare for communion because it is a personal thing. It ain't, it's not something that that's, even though we eat and drink together it means that we are brothers and sisters but when the rubber meets the road it's personal for you and 
That's why I like communion because it's so powerful. This is how powerful and personal it is that, that, that if we take, if we take, listen, if we take a pandemic inventory of our life, of our actions and our behavior during the pandemic, uh, we take inventory of our sins, then none of us would be eligible for communion today. So when you eat the bread and drink out of this cup, it ought to remind you of every, listen, I know it's Sunday morning, but it ought to remind you of every sin that we have ever committed. And remember that that sin has been forgiven. When you take that communion, it ought to remind you of the wretched life that you used to live. When you take the communion, you ought to, you ought to remember you can look back at every vulgar word that you have spoken. Every lie that you have told. Every vicious act that you have performed. Every valuable relationship that you have destroyed. Every vengeful opportunity that you did. You ought to look back over your life when you get that cup in your hand and remember every vile endeavor that you committed. Every vile deed that you participated in. You ought to take that cup and remember every gossiping moment that you were a part of. Every hateful thing that you ever did, you ought to remember that because that cup represents the forgiveness of our sin. The Lord suffers, the Lord's suffer takes away our guilt. And you can declare, I am guilty, but I'm also free. But when you take that bread and drink, that's that, that juice that we'll have today, you should thank God for your personal relationship with Jesus the Christ. Because he is the one that set us free. The power from this table only remind, not only reminds us that we can celebrate our forgiveness, but that forgiveness that we receive through our faith gives us the sense to forgive other folk. Praise the Lord. I, 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 he forgave, listen, because Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he forgave those who crucified him. Look like you ought to forgive somebody who's on this lot today. Who maybe have wronged you in their lives. You ought to be able to forgive somebody in your neighborhood or on the job. Because it ought to remind you of your own guilt. And if God forgave you, you ought to be able to give, forgive everybody else. Uh, uh, listen, the old folk used to say on co communion day, they used to say, the old school folk said, if you have an ought against your brother or your sister, you ought to make sure you get it right today. So I'm suggesting the same thing. If there's something in your heart against anybody else, you ought to get it right before you eat and drink today. Don't, don't, fail, don't, dis, don't not take the communion. Just get your heart right because it is a personal matter. The power from the table reminds us that it is personal. The second thing we learn from the text as I rush across the field, the, it, the power of the, of the communion reassures our partnership with Jesus Christ. It reassures us of our partnership. It renews that partnership. It's right in the text. In verse number 25, it says this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. It's an agreement confirmed that with my blood, so when we participate and celebrate communion, it means that we have come into agreement with God. It means that we've, we've been converted by God. We've come into agreement with him to our sins and our salvation. And we've also come into agreement with all the other believers. That's why he says, do this in remembrance of me. I like what he says in the new covenant. He says, this is the new covenant between God and his people. That's what it ought to remind you of. It's a new, I got a new relationship with God. I got an everlasting covenant with God. I have a, I have a covenant of peace and love with God. I like that renewal because he says it took place in the, in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And the promise of a great covenant after restoration of Israel in the Old Testament. But it also restores us in the New Testament. And I like that, but somebody said, how does it do it? How did the new covenant come about? It came about by the blood sacrifice. Just like some of the Old Testament covenants. There had to be the shedding of blood. 
there had to be some sacrifice of blood. There were some blood rituals that took place in order for us to realize that we have a new relationship. We have a new covenant relationship with Jesus who is our Christ. And I like that about it because it is a new covenant. Somebody said, what does it mean? It means we have to remember what he did for us. Remember how he brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. And he says it three times in the text, do this in remembrance of me. Uh, what is our covenant agreement with the Lord? I mean, he's made some new promises uh, to us in the New Testament. Y'all know the one we always talk about, he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. So when we gather at the table, we are reassured that we are joint heirs and partners with Jesus, who is the Christ. So in the new covenant, we are shareholders. We have his promises. Y'all know what some of the promises are? In the new covenant about salvation, he reminds us that there is no greater blessing than the free gift of God's salvation. Y'all know some of the promises of the New Testament covenant because we live by them. Y'all remember Romans 8, 28 that says all things work together for the good of them who love God and the call according to his purpose. That's a brand new covenant that we can stand on. It renews the covenant on every first Sunday morning that reminds us that we have comfort in our trials because we have a God that says he is our comfort. He's the God of all comfort. We have a new covenant in him. We have a new agreement with him that says if any man be in Christ, we are a new creation. That's what you need to tell your haters. That's what you need to tell those folk who don't understand you. They don't understand how you can praise God in your trials. You've got to remind them that I ain't who I used to be. I am a new creation because God has told me so. I have a inheritance and it's reserved for me according to 1 Peter 1 and 4 and I like that about God and he said I brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light but every time you take communion you ought to be reminded that you have a new covenant with me that you have a promise from me you have a promise that I am there I may not give you everything you want, but I sure make sure you got everything you need. Is there anybody here that I got peace when I'm in the midst of confusion? Because his peace protects us. Somebody said, I may not have all the substances, but one thing I do know, I have a God that will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. I'm glad that I have him because I put him first. I put him first in the communion. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And I'm glad what he says to me and I am a witness to it that all these other things, all these other things will be added unto you. Maybe you don't have what you need to have because you have not submitted unto him the righteousness of your life. But he says, my God shall supply all of my needs. You got to see him first. And we may not get it all that we need or all that we want, but our needs will be met because the power of the table, the power of communion reassures us that we have somebody that walks with us. We've got somebody that talks with us. Somebody that lives on the inside of us. we got a Holy Spirit that guides us and teaches us. The power from the table does something for us. It reminds us that it's personal. It reminds us of our, it renews our partnership. But I want to take my seat today, but I'm reminding you that this communion idea, this idea of taking the Lord's Supper, breaking bread together, it reconnects us. Watch this, it reconnects us with his resurrection. It reconnects us with his resurrection. It's right there in the text. For every time you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you are announcing 
the Lord's death until he comes again. And it reconnects us with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. I like what Paul says as he closes out the institution of the Lord's Supper by explaining in a unique repetition of the rem remembrance of Jesus the Christ. Because communion is about Jesus. It's not about us. Communion is about Jesus. It's not about another black suit and a black tie. Communion is about Jesus. It's not about some white pantyhose and a white hat and a white dress. Communion is about Jesus. And we need to focus on the remember and remember what he's done for us. So Paul says, hey, 1 Corinthians, hey, Noah's Ark and all y'all friends. He says, what you really got to do when you take the Lord's Supper, what you're really doing is proclaiming that he did die. You're proclaiming that he was buried. And you're proclaiming that he got up early on Sunday morning. So I'm asking somebody in the building, somebody in the parking lot, somebody in the living room, that you ought to proclaim that yes, he saved me. Yes, he did. When I take that cup, I'm going to proclaim that Jesus suffered for me. He died a vicarious death. And that is a blessing. It is a table of blessings because he suffered for me and you. It is a table of blessings. And you ought to declare it. You ought to decree it. You ought to proclaim it today that he is, that he's with us today. And that is a blessing. You ought to proclaim it today that our faith is sealed and our faith, our future is sure that eternity is a place that he went to prepare for us. The table is a table of blessings. Not only is it a table of blessings, it's a table of brokenness because y'all do know that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him, but by his stripes. I said by his stripes, we are now healed. I know that there's some broken people, there's some broken folk that's going to pick up the cup today. But be not dismayed, whatever the times, God will, I said God will, I said he is, I know that he's a healer, that he is a deliverer. I know that he could bring us out, but you got to learn how to let it come out your mouth. You got to declare for yourself. He did die. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, but it was early one Sunday morning that he got up with power in his hands. So when I take that cup today, when I take that bread today, I'm not just doing something. I'm thinking about where he brought me from. I'm thinking about I still got a partner. I still got an associate. I still have somebody that I can lean on that who is my strength. So you ought to declare in your living room that I have somebody that I'm going to do something today. I'm not just going through it. I know it's got power and the day I'm going to feel better when I leave here. I'm going to be better when, than when I leave than when I came. I'm going to have a better week because I had my communion. I'm going to have more prosperity because I had, I ate at the Lord's table because I was reminded and I will proclaim his goodness. I will proclaim his glory. I will proclaim his deliverance, his redemption, and his honor. Is there anybody here can say, I'm ready. I'm ready to break bread. I'm ready to take the Lord's table because I'm feeling a little broken. I'm feeling a little weak. I need my strength back. And I'm ready to take partake of the Lord's Supper. I'm ready for it. Because there's power. My guilt has been taken away. The stain of my sin has been taken away. I'm free and I'm forgiven. And that's why we can break bread together. That's why we can eat and drink together. That's why we can have holy communion.
But before you can have it, before you can have it, you must have that initial transformation. You must have that. You must accept Christ into your life. And if you're on the lot today, someone, someone said to me, just hold up for a second. Someone said to me that you told those folk if they weren't saved, they can drive up to the front of the church. I'll say the same thing. If you're on this lot today and you're not saved and you don't want to get out of your cars and you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus Christ, you can drive up here. You can walk up here and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's yours for the asking. If you're here today, you can come. It's an invitation. It's the most serious part of the service today because somebody may need him today. And he's yours for the asking. If you're here today, you can come. If you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube and you want to declare your salvation, if you want to accept Christ into your life, all you got to do is pray that sinner's prayer. Say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that Jesus died for my sins. I want him to come into my life. I confess that I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And that's why I want to be saved. Accept him into your life today. Pray that prayer. And you can be saved right there where you are. In that prison, in that hospital, or wherever you are, you can be saved today. We offer him to you today. And if you want to connect with us, you connect, connect with us right there on Facebook. Amen. You can do it on Facebook by, by uh, typing in that box. Right now, our number in there. Right now, number in there. Amen. Your number in there. And we'll give you a call. Amen. Come on around, baby. Come on around. Come up this. Come up on these steps. Amen. Is there somebody else on the lot? You want to make sure you're saved today. Come on. Come on. Come on here. Come on, we got time. You all in the clinic. You can sing this song when you know you're real deep. Jesus has changed. Jesus. He has changed. Has changed my right here uh, whether y'all know or not this is our second candidate for baptism in the last month uh, even the last month brother Keon Brown accepted Christ about two weeks ago and this is Miss Miracle Jones amen Miracle has been Miracle is literally she is a miracle Yes, amen. Amen. I think all of us know her story uh, we know her story and she says she's wanna she wanna accept Christ into her life and she wanna be baptized and she wanna be a member of the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. And that's
that's why the church, all the church has to do is say amen. 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 It's already been settled in heaven. Amen. And God bless you. Thank you, Lord. We're going to take, we're going to give you the right hand of welcome right there. You know you're welcome. And you're going to stay with uh, grand, grand, granddad. And then we're going to talk to you after church. And get all situated and see if you want to get baptized this Thursday. All right? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. Amen. God bless you. All right. together. The sermon has spoken to us about the institution of the Lord's Supper. It is for believers, those who have accepted Christ in their lives. Can I go on and do a te real quick teaching moment? A real teaching moment. Uh, Brother Roosevelt, can y'all make sure that Miracle has her communion? Amen. I I'm going to stop right now. Amen. Y'all wave your hand. Let me know whether she has her communion or not. She has it. Does she have one? If not, come get it, come, come get it, come get it. Come to the table. Come to the I want to just let it come right there. Let it come right there. Listen, the reason I the reason I said that I wanted to use this as a teaching moment, we're not saved when we get baptized. We're right. saved when we accept Christ. Right. The baptism is just the evidence. Amen. It's the evidence of what has already taken on the inside. So listen, whatever happens, if she, something can happen to that young, my young lady before Thursday, guess what? She's going to meet us in heaven because she's already saved. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all question me on Facebook with that a little later on. We'll talk about it. Amen. Jesus instituted this Lord's Supper, and of course he put it together for us to remind us, yeah, to remind us of what it means. Amen. Uh, hopefully all of you have yours already, and we're going to make sure these deacons have theirs. This blood represents his broken body. Amen. That was crucified on Calvary's cross. This fruit of the vine represents his blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Amen. Amen. And after instituting, after instituting the Lord's Supper, y'all heard it said, Amen. Y'all heard it said in the sermon that he, he took the bread He, 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 watch what happens first. Wait a minute. Watch what, watch what happens first. He took the bread. He blessed the bread. Yeah. And then he broke the bread. That's a life story. We come to Christ. We are blessed. 
but many times, even after being saved, we are broken. But this reminds us that we have somebody with us. Yes. Amen. This seals the deal. Amen. That we commune together. And they say after he did that, he told them to eat. And they ate together. Then with the fruit of the vine, he told them to do something. He says after he blessed it, poured it, blessed it. Then he says, drink ye all of it. And the Bible says they drink together. And that give us that power. Amen. That power that's in the blood. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us uh, in worship today. And we thank God for you. Amen. We'll see you on next Sunday. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly but all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for communion. We thank you for sharing. We thank you for the power. Amen.